So in this video, I'll continue the discussion on parallel transformers. So in this case, we'll see uh, just different topologies where you probably want to, uh, you know, make sure the, you know, you don't have like circulating current. So you have transformer one and transformer two. In this case, transformer one, for instance, is connected to bus one. Transformer 2 is connected to bus 2. So on the high side, you know, if I call, let me just get a pin. So if I call, this is kind of the high side of transformer, of the transformers. This is kind of the low side. And the high side, you know, it can be 230 kV, it can be 345, 138, 161 kV, uh, 69 kV, 34, and so on and so forth. Low side can be 138 kV, 161 kV, 34, 69, or 12 kV, 4 kV, it depends. For, for now, we will just, to demonstrate the kind of, the topic we'll just call high side, low side or primary, secondary. But anyway, you have transformer one and two, so then you have the high side bus, and bus you can <clears throat> kind of like uh, where the connections are made, so. But bus one and bus two are connected through this bus type breaker and two switches, which is normally closed. So under normal conditions, basically there is a path and I'll highlight. So basically this path is complete or the circuit is completed here. So the same thing on the low side, you have this tie breaker and it's two switches. So they're normally closed. So the path is completed basically. So we assume, so from transformer connected here, and transformer to the same thing. So you see there is a complete path. So go back to pin and let's assume this is a line or feeder, you know, number one. You can have multiple. It just for simplicity, I'm just showing two. So line two. So if the line is energized and it's energized, like line one is energized in bus one, line two is energized in bus two. Now, we assume the low side, you know, kind of goes to the load or, you know. So in this case, if the transformer one and two are not on the same tap or they don't have the same terms of ratio, you could have circulating current. And that circulating current is trapped in the loop formed by the high side and low side of the transformer. And in a previous video, uh, part four, I talked about, kind of showed like how to calculate that circulating current, you know. So it's important when you have, you know, two transformers, you know, connected through straight buses with the high side, you know, tied with a normally closed breaker, low side tied through a normally closed breaker as well, you know, to make sure the transformers are, you know, that are not gonna cause any circulating current. So there, here's another example. Instead, instead of straight bus, you know, so this is transformer one, this is transformer two, And just so, so this is a breaker, circuit breaker, capable of interrupting fault current. Basically, this is, you know, just disconnect switch. Disconnect switches are typically not capable. They're not capable of uh, breaking or interrupting fault current or load and you know load you can they can they have the capability of breaking load if they have an interrupting device and also switches you have to worry about charging current you know so they have to be capable of that otherwise you might have to have a 
interruption device. That's not the topic of this video. So, but anyway, so so this is a ring bus. You know, it looks basically just like a ring. So you have four four device uh, four terminals. So you have a line. You know, line. If I call it number one, line number two. Then you have transformer one, two. So you have four things connected to this ring bus. That's why you have four breakers. How many terminals are connected? That's the number, how many uh, breakers you need. And each breaker has one switch on its side for maintenance purposes, if you wanna isolate the breaker, basically. In a separate video, I talked about the trade-offs, you know, straight bus versus ring bus versus a break and a half as, uh, the next uh, slide, we'll, I'll talk about ring, uh, break and half. So, you know, each one has trade-offs, you know, cost versus more or increased reliability. Anyway, that's not the subject of this lecture. So on the low side, again, so if we call this a high side, high side this is low side or primary, secondary, however you want to call it, I'm not giving it any voltage. But again, you know, the high side can be just as an example, 345 kV, low side 138 kV. So as you can see here, you know, the ring bus, everything is is kind of is it's a complete circuit here because everything is normally closed under normal conditions. So you know, so what they do in that case, they put the the two transformers in parallel. Because now from this ring bus here, if you go through the transformer, so you have a complete path, you have a complete path here. So what's gonna happen is, so, so you have to worry about circulating current. So the two transformers, they have to have, uh, you know, same taps or same turn the ratio basically. So here we have a break and half on the high side and low side of the transformers, you have a ring pass. So this is a ring bus, this is a breaker and half. So again, <clears throat> so if you go through the same kind of methodology, the break and half is kind of a complete path. So then from this path here through the transformer, so it's a complete path then. And, and what I'm drawing here, they don't represent the physical aspect. It's really just electrical. So, so again, you have to worry about, you know, sometimes, you know, you hear people say circulating VARs. So you have to worry about circulating VARs or circulating current, basically. And that circulating current does not exit this, uh, uh, loop you know it's not going to go to the lines for instance back to the system so if i call that num line number one this is line number two so this circulating current does not exit you know it's not going to go back to the line you know it's just going to be trapped within the loop formed by the two transformers being in parallel so again it you know, any time you have two transforms that will be in parallel, you know, you have to make sure, you know, that you're not, you know, you're not going to cause any circulating current because circulating current, you know, will cause uh, overheating basically. And, and if it's sustained for a long duration, it could damage the transformers and even lead to a catastrophic failure basically. You know, so transformer one, for instance, you know, it might be, you know, rated 400 MVA. If it's a transformer, a transmission transformer, you know, transformer two, if we assume the same, 
you know, it can be 700 MVA, it depends. So under normal conditions, that means everything is, the system is running under no contingencies. There is no fault going on. You didn't lose any line, you know. And, you know, keep in mind, the, what I'm showing here is part of a large system, pro, you know. So, so under normal conditions, these 400 MVAs, you know, each transformer, but probably might be loaded less than 100 MVA, you know. I'm, you know, I'm just giving like a hypothetical example, you know. However, as soon as you have a contingency, you you lost a path, basically a flow path, you know, like, uh, you know, a line is uh, taken out of service due to a fault, for instance, you know, lightning hit it or uh, a tree fell on, you know, and somehow caused a permanent fault. Now it's transformers could be loaded near the top MVA, you know, especially if it's like N minus, minus one, minus one, basically you lost two things, you know. So, so now the transformers are loaded near their top ratings, you know, so any circulating current is just going to cause overheating. So that's why it's, it's very important to make sure you know, in a time you have, you know, two transformers in parallel, you have to make sure there's no circulating current. Thank you and have a great day.